Good morning, everyone. Welcome to DockerCon. We'll start our Golden Theater on time, 11.05. So the first topic is timing, timing cloud costs with Docker. Let's, our, let's welcome our first speaker, Chen Hui from Exo Group. Um, hi. Uh, so my name is Chen Hui, like I said. Um, with Exo Group talking about taming cloud costs. So a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. Talks divided into three parts. A little bit about uh, background on Exo Group, what we do. A um, little bit about our history with containers. Um, and then how we implemented Docker Swarm. Um, to reduce cost, uh, why we kind of chose that way of orchestration over some others, uh, and then also uh, what our results were, some preliminary results of what we saved uh, doing this. So a little bit of who we are, what we do. We're not Exo Group to, or not Exo Communications to Telco. We're Exo Group. Um, you might know us as the not. Um, generally, we cover things, uh, people's special moments, like weddings, babies, home building. Uh, we have to do with all that. Uh, the team I work on is called Engineering Productivity Team. Uh, we're a DevOps group that kind of has three main things that we're in charge of doing. Uh, reducing cloud costs. Um, developing tools and leading practices, like trying to recommend the best things for our developers to do. Um, to talk a little bit about how we got to containers at XO, uh, we started out, we had a desire to move away. Um, we have a legacy data center uh, where we have our Rails apps running on bare metal VMware, um, or not bare metal VMware, but on VMware. And we're trying to move away from that. And we kind of decided that we want to move to AWS and that also at the same time start containerizing things. And we looked at Elastic Beanstalk um, and kind of piloted it. And then within about six months, kind of didn't look back and just dockerized everything and like throw everything up on Beanstalk. Pretty much everything that you see on our sites um, is a Beanstalk of some sort. So a couple of things about Beanstalk. Um, the good thing about it is that it's a one-stop shop. It takes care of deploying your container, as well as provisioning the infrastructure. The downside of that is that it's pretty slow uh, because any change you make, like if you do a deployment, it destroys everything. It destroys the container, it destroys the instance, and then rebuilds it. Um, so it takes, deployments take a long time. Um, the other thing, that happens is that it's a little difficult to troubleshoot, um, mainly because there's an extra layer. Um, with Beanstalk, the way it works is that you have your container, and then uh, AWS, uh, there's an Nginx proxy that's between your container and um, on the instance, which makes it a little more difficult to uh, troubleshoot, there's things that you have to consider. Um, for us, we had an instance where um, we have image uploads that go through, and we have a container that does that. Um, and, I, you know, AWS has a pretty low limit on uploads through that Nginx proxy. So you kind of have to be aware that that's there um, when you're troubleshooting. The last thing is that we found that it started to get expensive. And so the reason why is really this picture, right? 
like the way Beanstalk works, the straight up Beanstalk, it's one container on each instance. And that just kills you, right? Like, I mean, what you really want to do is this, which is like more containers on one instance. So you might be like, well, there are multi-container Beanstalks. Like, why don't you do that? Um, like, why you swarm? The reason is because in the end of multi-container Beanstalk, you have to use ECS. And in, the, in that case, you're having to move to a clustering solution anyway. So we kind of decided um, to go with Swarm because of these things. Kind of some of the stuff they talked about during the keynote, which is batteries are included. Like it, it works, it's built out of box, right? It comes with Docker, which means simpler configuration, which means it's also using the same APIs and tools, like the same CLI that developers are used to. Um, and one thing that we're, that hasn't come up with, that's too important to us so far, but might be in the future, is we don't want to be locked to one cloud provider. So with Beanstalk right now, if something happened to Amazon or we decided for whatever reason we didn't want to be on Amazon anymore, there is significant rework for us to move things over. Um, with Swarm, like, well, if we use Beanstalk at ECS, all right, um, with Swarm, we don't have that same issue, less of an issue. Uh, so we got to provisioning uh, Swarm, and we tried kind of every which way that was possible to do it. Um, we started out, uh, there was a guy on the team who wrote something we call Exo First Run, which is a bunch of bash scripts, which was just kind of a pretty bad way of doing it. Um, and then I got, thought I got clever, and it was like, oh, I can use Terraform and Ansible, and that ended up to be a little bit of a disaster. Um, there were just all kinds of problems with that. Uh, we tried CloudFormation at one point, and we even tried Rancher. Um, and we kind of landed on Docker Machine, um, which you might be like, well, why? It's like the simplest thing that kind of comes. But we like it because there are drivers available for most cloud providers. Um, it's actively supported by Docker. It's scriptable, and it works. There is a level of simplicity to it. Right, like you can, like this is very simple bash script, right? Like you're just calling Docker machine, you're passing all the parameters, you're using a for loop, you're making three of them, like it's not that difficult and there's that level of simplicity. With Terraform, I had all kinds of problems where like things were going in circles and um, it was kind of horrible. So we're, kind of pointing it this way, I imagine that based on what I saw uh, on the keynote, we might be deploying it differently because of the integration of the desktop, but for now, that's the way we're doing it. Uh, so a little bit about what we use it for. Um, generally, right now, we're using it for our stateless applications, so we have a handful of things that we have, the main thing being our global proxy. So um, our site is basically a conglomeration of a whole bunch of web apps. And so there's a global proxy that directs all that traffic. Um, that is pretty central to kind of how our whole application works. Um, so that we also have a bunch of what we call EPT, engineering productivity, um, tools, uh, things like waterfall visualization, uh, visualization tools, um, something to alert us for certificates expiring, like it runs every week and kind of um, checks the, the validity. And there's also um, 
more and more of these cloud optimization tools. So we have things like uh, what we call EBS Snappy, which goes through and searches out EBS um, volumes that aren't being attached, and then you know snapshots them and deletes them. Uh, and also we have something that does the same thing with, for RDS um, databases. Uh, we're also using this to dockerize or um, to reduce the cost of running our homepage. So, oh, okay. Um, so what did we end up doing uh, with the realization of savings? So I guess to talk a little bit more about like how we implemented this, our global proxy uh, is using not the, I guess it doesn't use swarm mode, it uses the older, um, I forget what it's called, but like basically swarm v1, right? So we have to have console for service discovery, we have registrator uh, to register services, and then we have um, basically the um, not proxy and a bump proxy. So with the two main sites, the, um, the proxies that operate for that for QA and production. So it's a diagram of kind of how it works. Um, we have it crossed between two regions. So it, we have it in Virginia and um, Oregon, um, three nodes in uh, east and two nodes in west um, with load balancers between each one uh, so they're redundant across and within the region um, and so I guess so all told the all-in cost of everything you just saw back here is about $600 a month, right? That includes all the ELBs, uh, there are five C3 large instances, uh, 10 ELBs, and then two T2 smalls for the um, replica and the master, uh, which, like I said, provides triple redundancy uh, in east and quite double redundancy in west. So if we were to do the same thing in uh, using Beanstalk, it would end up to be, uh, I think, 10 instances, uh, the same 10 ELBs because of how we're crossing and then because of the two environments. Um, and it'd be about $1,000 a month. So in the end, the savings is about 40%. Uh, because we were able to compress uh, these things into that. Um, some of the next steps that we're doing uh, that I'm actually working on right now, uh, we're also looking to, uh, so that was, this was the global proxy. So the savings was about 40%. This savings for our other tools is a little, um, it's a little bit of a work in progress. Uh, right now we have a cluster, another cluster of four C4 larges or C4 4X larges. Um, and that's about 2,300 uh, a month. And then each uh, application requires an ELB, which is about 18. So right now, uh, I mean, we're, we're replacing, so the home page has been uh, moved and that uh, was costing us about $525 on Heroku. Um, and then Horap, which is about $334 an instance. Um, so the question you might be asking is, well, like you're talking here, ah. Okay. It's a 
we're really looking, we made this really large cluster and we're intending to put a lot of things on there. So we're kind of in the process of filling it up. Um, now, I did run some metrics and right now the home page, which runs all our traffic, runs at about less than 10% of that giant cluster. So assuming we can kind of throw 10 more things on there that's around, you know, 500 bucks, um, you're talking about a similar level of savings. But again, it's kind of a work in progress that we're working on. Um, guess what we'll actually. And I think we have a little bit of time, so I was gonna do a demo um, of kind of what we're doing. Okay. So how we're doing, I guess it's interesting. We're using Docker Cloud for, um, to manage the authentication for the swarm. And it's kind of like, it's not as fancy as what they're doing right now, but the way we connect, it's actually kind of neat. Um, there's a Docker daemon that you can run locally. And so basically, when you're doing that, at this point, I'm connecting to to our swarm, right? So the dev swarm the, 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 that has the home page is running that. So if I do Docker service list, ah, what's it doing? Well, I ran it before. <laughs> really bizarre. Okay. Um, well, I ran this before and you can see here that we have the home page and it's replicated three times and you have Docker service. Um, I'm not sure why it's not working, but um, so, yeah, that's, uh, we found that that's a really nice way for us to manage authentication and kind of um, share images and do stuff and things like that. So, um, I think that's pretty much it. So, if you have any questions, I think we ha I have a little bit more time um, about kind of what we did. Thanks. <laughs>